happened to the worst drought in history. Many wonder if we could eventually run out of water. Tonight we begin a two-day look at that question. Chelsea Donovan focuses on the water rose for communities that rely on water from underground. You could call Karen Wallace the water woman in Onslow County. Her job is to make sure your faucet looks like this. It's basically make sure that we pump enough water to keep the system full and to keep water coming to the people's homes. Wallace is the water superintendent for Onwasa, or Onslow County Water and Sewer Authority. Her crew pumps 7 million gallons of water daily to the majority of the county's 150,000 residents. Onslow and its neighboring counties, including Duplin, Jones, and Carteret, rely on groundwater to supply your home. There are 15 wells just like this one in Onslow County that tap into the groundwater. That groundwater is then pumped to the surface. It then goes to a treatment facility before making its way to your home. 52% of North Carolinians rely on groundwater. Groundwater is trapped in what they call an aquifer. It's a layer of limestone or gravel or dirt that actually holds water in it. Water that could be decades old before it gets to us, according to Frank Sanders, on Wassa's director of operations. Over years and years of time, the water moves through the aquifers. And so the water level's very deep. It's like a, a huge reservoir, of billions and billions of gallons. The aquifers Eastern Carolina taps into are the Castle Hain and Black Creek, almost like a water trap, 200 feet under the ground. It gets recharged from areas where it has rained in different parts of the state. But as North Carolina remains under the worst drought in recorded history, and with the aquifers not being recharged by rain, the water supply is certainly a worry. Right now our bigger concern probably is that more and more people are going to the aquifers and that over time when you see more and more use, that water level can start to decline. So People, for example, in Raleigh, in the central part of the state, folks that rely on surface water. If more people decide they have to go to groundwater because the surface water from the lakes aren't, isn't there or the rivers isn't there, they could eventually go into the groundwater that we're using. Meaning more people tapping into already heavily used aquifers. And Sanders says it's the only viable option for this part of the state. He says we cannot pull much water from our area rivers or neighboring ocean. With our rivers here, they're very relatively short, only miles long. For If we were to try to pull water from that, what would happen is we would end up probably in some cases drying up the river or because it's connected to the ocean, the salt water would move back up from the ocean and we'd end up pulling in ocean water into our intake and we couldn't drink that. For now, it's up to Mother Nature to help replenish our sources so in the future, this won't be bone dry. Also, over time, experts say the Castle Hain Aquifer is becoming more polluted with salt water, prompting more communities and cities to tap into the Black Creek Aquifer, which is close to 100 pure. Now, tomorrow at 6, we're going to take a look at communities that get their water from the surface, like the Tar River, and also coming up tonight at 11, a closer look at how that water gets to your home.